Trump is calling it the biggest night in fundraising history. The fundraiser at hedge fund billionaire John Paulson's home raked in over $50 million, according to the RNC. That's up from early estimates of $43 million and nearly double what President Biden raised at his New York City fundraiser with former presidents Obama and Clinton. This was the first major fundraiser for Trump and the RNC since he became the, pres the party's presumptive presidential nominee. Trump said his supporters are contributing to a cause that will restore faith in our country. People are just wanting change. The rich people want it, poor people want it. Everybody wants change. The country is really doing poorly. We're a laughing stock all over the world. We're going to get that change very quickly. There were some big names and a lot of money at last night's event. High dollar donors paid anywhere from two hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars to be at the fundraiser. And it was headlined by the former president and former first lady Melania Trump. Big Republican mega donors like oil tycoon Harold Hamm and casino mogul Steve Wynn were on the guest list, along with former rivals who have now endorsed him. Senator Tim Scott. Governor Doug Burgum and Vivek Ramaswamy. The Biden campaign slammed Trump's high dollar donor strategy, saying it's a way for Trump to pay off his legal fees and do the bidding of his billionaire buddies. This is a grassroots campaign of nurses and teachers and firefighters and cops versus Donald Trump and a couple billionaires looking for a tax cut. Donations from the Palm Beach fundraiser will go to Trump's campaign, the RNC, state political parties, and a political action committee that helps pay his legal bills. But a Trump campaign spokesperson says that PAC also covers other expenses as well. Still, Trump is behind his competition in terms of money. Those fundraising dollars will help Trump close the gap with President Biden, who raised $90 million last month. Biden also has more cash on hand with $192 million compared to Trump's $93 million. Now, Trump has several more fundraisers this week, including one on Wednesday in Georgia, where he's facing election interference charges. And meanwhile, President Biden has campaign events in Madison, Wisconsin and Chicago. Vice President Kamala Harris will be in Philadelphia tomorrow. This is it. Gave up counting it. I mean, I had to. It was just so much. How much is this? I have no earthly idea. I just stack it up. <laughs> just stack it up. I don't, I don't know how much money is it. Well, it's fifty point five million dollars. Donald Trump breaking all fundraising records for all politics for all time and also breaking the internet this morning with an eclipse meme that is oh so choice that we appreciate a good meme on this program today is monday april 8th 2024 president trump also dares judge in alvin bragg's bs case to jail him says put me in jail let's go i'm not gonna uh do this gag order thing right we're not a third world country prove we are a third world country and well <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that is uh, being proven uh, all the time. Byron Donalds joins the show. Happy Eclipse. It's your boy, Benny. And this is The Benny Show. Uh, when we travel, we always ensure that our electronics are protected and that we are protected from harmful radiation and wireless signals that may or may not interfere with your brain and certainly interfere with your data. That's why we use Silent. We make sure that we are protected with Silent, which is an awesome company that has these great Faraday sleeves, backpacks, which you have them here in the uh, studio. It's amazing. So where my phone sleeps at night and it protects us from harmful radiation. Maybe you'll need to, some protection from harmful radiation if you're standing outside staring at the eclipse. We're going to cover it all today, ladies and gentlemen. Go to Silent today, slnt.com today, slnt.com slash Benny and save 15%. Plus free shipping on qualified orders, slnt.com slash Benny. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's Eclipse Day. Now, I don't really care about these things. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. I was thinking about this on the drive into the studio today. I was like, you know what? This is maybe it's like a, a sign from God, right? Like God created the universe, these celestial bodies. It doesn't have to be like some crazy crystal lady thing, you know, banging the banging the drum, right, and singing to the ancient spirits. No, it can just be like the power of God moving celestial bodies and proving 
how powerful he truly is, right? So th- it ain't nothing wrong with being down, with looking at an eclipse. Pretty cool, right? You don't have to be so crunchy about it. You don't have to be all crazy dreadlocks, right? And piercings and stuff, banging drum. So I, you know, the eclipse is happening here. What time? Three. three o'clock. Okay, so it's happening in Florida at three o'clock. So we'll step outside the studio. We rarely step out. We've never seen the sun. We don't really see the sun on this program. <laughs> we, go, we go home typically when it's dark outside. But uh, we'll step out and we'll uh, see the eclipse, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but there was a legendary moment and an important moment. And we want to start our show. It, it is maybe not the most important topic of today. But we want to start our show with a incredible meme that Donald Trump posted this morning that is causing libs to lose their damn minds. And we're going to go through exactly how Trump is able to control and to troll the left into promoting uh, his advertisements. Because Donald Trump went up with an Eclipse ad this morning that is drop dead hysterical. And it kind of proves how Donald Trump is firing on all cylinders. The entire show is going to be about how like this is a very different Trump campaign ad. He is uh, eclipsing all fundraising records. He's eclipsing the threats uh, from leftist judges to jail him, and he is also uh, eclipsing the eclipse. Here we go. Trump was up with this about an hour ago. It's gone thermonuclear. The libs are seething and freaking out. Look at this from Time Magazine. They can't believe they can't believe it. They're so upset that Donald Trump's using the eclipse to make this hysterical video. It's a very funny video. It's a great video. Everyone's screaming. Yes, we love it. Trump posts bizarre solar eclipse campaign ad with head blocking out the sun. Not this one. This is the other one. Uh, this is the this is the other one. Uh, Rice. Trump posts bizarre solar eclipse campaign ad with head blocking out the sun from Time magazine. This is why we win. And this is why they lose. The reason we win and they lose is because, well, a few things. One, we're human beings with joy in our lives. There's nothing wrong with going out and like seeing the eclipse. Like, that's awesome. It, it, it can be like the power of God and, and, and you're allowed to move celestial bodies. God created the universe. Come on. What a, what else can he do for our country? You can save our country, right? You can you save us and move the celestial bodies to make the sun go dark in the middle of the day. It's pretty awesome. Uh, but also, like, we have joy. And we say it on the program all the time. You can't defeat the happy warriors. And so there's like, the, there's jo- like we can meme. It's a trope. The left can't meme. It's a trope that these people have no happiness. They have no joy in their lives. And so they don't even understand memes like this. They don't understand why it's so funny, why it's so freaking hilarious. And Donald Trump does because Donald Trump is still a grounded person. Who And we've spent time one-on-one with Donald Trump. The guy's hilarious. He's really funny. And he's just a dude, kind of like you and me. And that's what makes him um, like America first. That's what makes populism so popular. And it's why they're losing their minds across the globe right now uh, in, in every possible arena that the left controls. They are trying to create more censorship and more dominance over your life. 
They hate being ridiculed. They hate these memes. That's why we must keep memeing. And Donald Trump's been memeing for a very, very long time. This is not the first time he's pissed off time. Do we have the uh, Time Magazine article, the right one? Now, Trump posts bizarre solar eclipse campaign ad. It's bizarre with his head blocking out the sun. This is how the left responds to that, to this like h- hilarious meme. Seething and anger and bitterness and crying and salt. Ladies and gentlemen, salt must flow. Now, this isn't the first time that Donald Trump has posted an eclipse meme. Back in 2017, there was another eclipse, and Donald Trump posted this meme of him and Obama. <laughs> Trump's anti Obama eclipse meme doesn't make scientific sense. <laughs> So Time Magazine at the time to show to show you like how how much how good Trump is at trolling these people. Trump's anti so he called this an anti Obama meme. It's just funny. This is just funny stuff. Donald Trump posing. Trump's anti Obama eclipse meme doesn't make scientific sense. It doesn't make sense. Show, put up the the Time Magazine article, please, to show you that Trump Trump's been trolling with Trump's been trolling with memes for a long time over the eclipse, and this is just. This is just classic stuff here. And Donald Trump, of course, legendary from the White House balcony in 2017, staring directly into the sun. They literally wrote this article. They wrote the article that the meme, can you scroll through the article, please? The meme of Obama and Trump, uh, Trump blocking out Obama. Is This isn't scientifically accurate. <laughs> no wonder lockdowns worked on these people. They're, su- they're such joyless cretins they 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 lack so much joy in their lives they're fact checking scientifically this meme it doesn't make sense. yet they believe yet they they believe that covid came from a pangolin okay in a wet market right they, they'll believe that and uh not even our own fbi believes that by the way so a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, that Donald Trump went out in 2017 and looked directly in the sun. We assume we'll get epic Trump campaign content. Here's the photo of Trump looking kind of directly into the sky, into the sun back in uh, 2017. <laughs> this should be his presidential portrait. OK, I don't know what Trump's presidential portrait will be. He's going to get one. This should be it. Can we make can we make this big? This is like this is this is the stuff of legends. All right. This should be Trump's official presidential portrait. All right, that that should be it. It should just be Trump staring, and you can actually see the eclipse reflected off of his pupils if you zoom in close enough. Uh, this should this should this. Is... <laughs> we have we do a little trolling on this show. We do a little trolling, so they lost their minds over this. They're still, by the way, this is still broken them. Okay, this is this still breaks them. Uh, to this day, CNN triggered as of this morning, CNN is still triggered over this photo. Here we go. Tom, for those of us who are lucky enough to be in the path of the eclipse, uh, let's talk about uh, what you should and should not do. And we do have a visual reference as to what you should not do. Uh, I know you have something, but there you should not do this. Apparently, you should not look up at the eclipse. Uh, don't do that. That, no. that will damage your eyes. That Apparently is not, the, the president of the is, United States did it uh, some years ago. Yeah, that is not a thing to do. Don't if do you're... They're so broken. These people are still, they're still broken. And it's still, it's great to make me, this moment, this moment is legendary. One of our favorite members of Congress uh, saying, remember what they stole from you. Mike Collins, Donald Trump looking up directly at the sun. Can we, can we, can we zoom in a little bit? <laughs> Baron looking down. Poor, poor young Baron looking down, Melania looking away, and Donald Trump. <laughs> I will defeat you! It looks like a Marvel movie poster. The guy, they, this should be the official presidential portrait. Mint it, put it on our money. Make this the next Mount Rushmore face. Never forget when we had a president that stared down the sun and won. <laughs> <laughs> this this moment actually makes great meme content. This was um uh this was surfaced for us a really really good one. Here we go, very choice. Hey, 
Hey, uh, ALX, there's another funny Melania one. Hold on, hold on. That was a good meme. But there's another funny Melania one from this morning. Hold on, get me that. Yeah, there it is, right there. There you go. Here we go, boys. I got you. We do the show live. We do the show live. So sometimes you got to ask for an asset. There it is. Don't worry, I got you. This one's uh, this one's really good. Royce, load it up and let's play it. This is a uh, this is a remix of the 2017 Solar Eclipse uh, for the modern day. And uh, we appreciate it. Let's go. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is so... <laughs> oh, wow. Even the eclipse knows. <laughs> All right. All right. Do we have a, uh, do we have a little, everyone's talking about the eclipse again. I'm not some astrology. I'm tr I've tried my best. I don't know my sign. I don't know my, I was born in May. I don't know my sign. I don't know my astrological stuff. We went once to a place called Sedona in Arizona, where apparently there's all this mystical astrological stuff. I thought it was all garbly goop and jargly jubbly. There's all these, all these crystal ladies like out there with their little healing crystals. I don't believe any of that stuff. I don't, I don't, but I'm not going to knock you. Okay. If you do, I think the eclipse is neat. We have a, uh, a helpful chart of the eclipse and how, where it's going to, uh, where it's going to be and where it's going to show up. This is for Florida. Let's get a national one, please. Because of course we have a national audience here. I'll put up the chart, um, for fun this morning. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is also <laughs> Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Hillary Clinton's getting roasted, by the way, today. She's trying to she's trying to cash in on uh, Trump hatred today. This is the one I liked. Hold on, boys. This is the one I like. This one from today. This will show you where the there. This is an animation to show you where the eclipse is. <laughs> Hillary, it shows how unfunny these people are. Look at this. This photo is empirically hilarious. And Hillary Clinton up today with a photo, not photos of Bill Clinton on Little St. James. The FBI has all those. They're the ones who raided uh, Epstein's apartments and took all of the data and information. No, no, no. Not photos of Bill Clinton on the Lolita Express. We actually have that photo. Maybe we'll put that photo up, Hillary. We should respond to that, by the way, with a photo of Bill Clinton and Epstein on the jet. So, uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is the animation. If you're into this kind of stuff, that's so we're not going to get really much of it in Florida. If you're into this kind of stuff, this is where the eclipse is. If you're in the path of the eclipse, apparently all the Airbnbs are all booked. Apparently there's a bunch of people that like really, really love this stuff. And there's all these parties and things happening. Scott Pressler is in Erie, Pennsylvania. Erie, Pennsylvania is right in the line of the eclipse. You can see there. Uh, and Scott Pressler is there registering voters. Super based. Super awesome. This is the timeline um, of the day. And so this afternoon, there you go. But at least you got, at least you got some really funny, uh, at least you got some really funny memes out of it, right? Hillary Clinton getting uh, completely roasted, by the way. Uh, here's Scott Pressler. Here's Scott Pressler uh, uh, up in Erie, Pennsylvania. So there's apparently hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of people that like are traveling to places to see the eclipse. I certainly am not one of them, uh, but Scott Pressler is. Scott Pressler is going to be. Uh, at, in Erie, Pennsylvania, registering voters. If you're in Pennsylvania, go say hi to Scott. Uh, what a total and complete legend. So, ladies and gentlemen, speaking of legends, Donald Trump raising more money than any politician has ever raised in the history of political fundraising this weekend in Florida, in Palm Beach, Donald Trump raising a record $50.5 million at fundraiser, double the amount netted by Joe Biden and two other presidents, plus Lizzo, Stephen Colbert, and every other D-list celebrity they could shove on stage, which not that, you know, not, not a lot of room actually uh, on that stage for anyone else. Melania dazzles in tropical jumpsuit. Yo, let's go. So here's what happened. Donald Trump, obviously, uh, on Saturday night, had a soiree and eclipsed, LOL, 
Give me a dad joke. Please allow me to have a dad joke. I have three kids. I have a right to three dad jokes. A show eclipsed the number for Joe Biden's cringe fundraiser. Uh, we'll get to Donald Trump's fundraiser in just a moment, but a reminder who is up against uh, the people that literally needed to, needed to take the wheelchair entrance to the stage. This is the, uh, you, you know, like at your grandmother's church, how there's like a wheelchair lift, right? At senior centers, there's like a wheelchair lift. And it moves really slowly. This is what they forced Joe Biden to take at his fundraiser in New York. So this was the competition. This was a week ago. Um, you know, it's <laughs> it looks like a reunion tour of To Catch a Predator, actually. Uh, it should have been Chris Hansen walking out, being like, please take a, please take a seat, Bill. Mm, we have the uh, new Epstein documents, Bill Clinton, uh, in the Epstein documents 127 times. We counted Bill Clinton, uh, according to Jeffrey Epstein's, and I quote, liked them young, but is welcome on stage here without an ankle monitor, as far as we know, uh, and without shackles on, um, should be spending the night in Epstein's cell, Bill Clinton. But here we are. It's the world we live in. Joe Biden, obviously a known predator as well. Uh, Ashley Biden's diary was confirmed as real last week uh, by the federal government, who's asking for prison time for people who released the Ashley Biden diary in an act of journalism. Nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, this is the 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 cringe uh, fundraiser that they had. The fundraiser, by the way, was completely empty. We have photos from the inside. You can see it here in this clip where a protester literally stood up and shouted at Joe Biden while Joe Biden was mumbling through an, an insurrection line. It's too good. It's too perfect. Here we go. There was an insurrection. Shame! It's true. It's not just Joe Biden. As we regularly recall, G uh, Barack Obama on that stage is somebody who droned a 16 year old American citizen without due process or a trial and murdered that 16 year old American citizen. Uh, amazing how all these people are clapped and applauded, uh, but there weren't that many people to clap and applaud. You can see here in this image from the event that there were like no people actually at this event. So this was like kind of a pathetic fail. You can see here that the like generally empty, like totally empty. So what does this mean? It probably means that George Soros bought every single ticket, right? <laughs> Through dark money groups and uh, Joe Biden has no actual real supporters. In fact, there was an event outside. I'm just trying to do, trying to do it. I'm going to show you about the, I'm going to show you the Trump, like the difference between this and the Trump event, right? Which was filled with joy and happiness and people actually like, like the candidate and Donald Trump was just one president there instead of three. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the people inside don't like Joe Biden. The people outside definitely don't like Joe Biden. For every one supporter that went into the arena there with Joe Biden, Radio City Music Hall, uh, there were like 20 protesters outside. Jesse Waters spoke to a few of them. What are you here protesting about? I hate old white men. I'm protesting American empire. The American government is funding a genocide with our tax money. I'm protesting the American government. Simple as that. Why are you mad at Joe Biden? Joe Biden is an old white man. He's a clown. He's supporting Israel against Palestine. That's what we're angry about. He's racist. He's ruining the country. He's not listening to the American people. No genocide, Joe. The whole damn system's got to go. Everyone's also mad with Obama and Clinton, are you? I'm, yeah, because Obama did drone strikes in the Middle East during his presidency. What's your message to Joe Biden? My message is to Joe Biden is cease fire now. You should be ashamed of yourself. I don't believe you have an ounce of guilt in your body. And if Joe Biden keeps it up. No, Are you going to vote for him? No. No. I'm definitely not voting for him. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. 
What about Joe Biden? Does he have your vote? No, he doesn't have my vote. Hmm. Cool. The, you ever read the you ever read the famous story of Frankenstein? Frankenstein is the name of the doctor, actually, not the monster. It's called Frankenstein's monster. Frankenstein is the mad scientist who created an animated corpse out out of random body parts and limbs and sewed it all together. And then the monster turned on Dr. Frankenstein. All right. And that's exactly what you saw there in that video. So not a happy time, certainly not a happy place after a single night with Joe Biden, Lizzo quit music forever. <laughs> just an important, just an important reminder. I, I still can't get over this story. I don't care what she posts afterwards. Uh, I don't, I don't care what, what Lizzo has said to try and walk this back. Lizzo spent one night with Joe Biden and Bill Clinton and then quit music forever. Lizzo saying, I quit. There's no amount of money in the world. I didn't sign up for this. There's no amount of money in the world that would make me ever want to spend another night with Joe Biden. <laughs> and if you read the lawsuits against Lizzo, you'll see she has a pretty high threshold, quite frankly, for what she, uh, yeah, for, for what she considers inappropriate. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's move now to a much healthier, happier place, Palm Beach, Florida, not the rat's nest of New York. Of course, it is to be noted of uh, while all three of those presidents were in New York City, uh, there was only one president, Donald Trump, who was in New York City at the exact same time doing something honorable. So instead of watching Lizzo or lying or getting screamed at by a bunch of rabid orc-like protesters, Donald Trump was visiting with the widow of Jonathan Diller, a New York City police officer who was murdered by a career criminal, sprung from jail 21 different times, who had an illegal firearm, and who stole a husband from a wife, a father from his son, and there was one politician who was invited to this wake, and that politician was Donald Trump. We actually have footage of the governor of New York, someone he named Kathy Huckle, uh, being turned away at the door. It's actually shocking footage of the, the, the governor of New York being told by the cops, you're not welcome here. Go away. Remarkable. Donald Trump was very, very welcome. Do we actually, we got that footage? Yeah, this is amazing. I don't think we've actually played this on the show yet. Check this out. This is the governor of New York just to show you exactly what what kind of country we're, we're living in right now and how the vibe shift is happening. The vibe shift is happening here is Kathy Huckle, this is the governor of New York right now, who's a who's a absolutely disreputable, a true cretin. I mean, she's really she's truly awful, um, and she's in favor of, of course, every policy that got this officer killed. So that's her being told by the representatives for the police to GTFO. He says leave, and she has to turn around with her little squad and go. She has to turn, they turned her around at the door, said, you're not welcome here. Donald Trump, the only politician who was welcome. You can see here the, uh, the differences in what happens when Donald Trump goes to the door. Donald Trump welcomed with open arms and um, the grieving family, obviously, obviously thankful for Donald Trump to be there. The widow gave a, a heart gut-wrenching speech about this and blamed politicians. And this is, this is, um, there are, there's some senseless, there's some violence that's like straight up senseless. And it's hard to really pin on one policy or another because human, human beings snap and can behave like animals sometimes. Right. And, and, and sometimes it's hard to like pin it down on a single policy. I try as hard as we can not to do that. It's like the easiest, you know, dumbest, like weakest, uh, beer there is when it comes to commentating is to be like bad thing happened or like a hurricane happened it's donald trump's fault right it's like this it's so lazy okay but this is an example of something that new york literally did to their people and their cops uh policies sprung career criminal scum garbage from jail filth this man filth killed a cop for fun he was sprung from jail 21 different times because of people like Kathy Hochul and the leadership of New York and the policies that Democrats have voted into place. And so they are 100% to blame for this man's death. Now, 
uh, ladies and gentlemen, moving to a happier topic. So leaving New York, the hellscape that is New York, as many people do, and coming down to the state of Florida. So Joe Biden hosts his fundraiser. Everyone squeals and squeeze about how uh, Joe Biden made $25 million. And lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump, a week later, doubles that amount in Florida. Donald Trump spoke at the fundraiser, turned to the cameras, welcome the media. Uh, I want to direct your attention, of course, to Melania Trump here and um, what it looks like to actually have a first lady that you are that's dignified and that you're proud of. Donald Trump speaking at his record-breaking fundraiser. People are just wanting change. The rich people want it, poor people want it. Everybody wants change. Our country is really doing poorly. We're a laughing stock all over the world, and we're going to get that change very quickly. And this has been some uh, incredible evening before it even starts, because people, they wanted to contribute to a cause of making America great again, and that's what's happened. We're going to make America great again. Everyone knows it. The election's going to be in now a little more than six months, and it's going to be the most important, I believe, election we've ever had. I think it's going to go down as the most important date in the history of our country. That's November 5th will be the most important date in the history of our country. And thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here. All right, baby. This fundraiser was attended, obviously, by uh, some very, very rich people, some familiar faces. Uh, obviously some people who are inside of the zeitgeist, right? So you have uh, Doug Burgum, who ran for president against Donald Trump. He's the governor of North Dakota. Vivek Ranswamy was there. Uh, ALX, is there anybody else on the, the guest list who's like a friend of the show or has been on the show that we know? Obviously, Laura Trump is there. Laura Trump is the new RNC co-chair. Uh, the RNC, by the way, was cratering in its fundraising with Rana. It was going bankrupt. The RNC was was looking was going to banks and begging hat in hand for loans because they had no money under Ronna McRomney, which is quite frankly what makes us assume that she she was actively trying to run the RNC into the ground. It's incredible the turnaround that can happen uh, with proper leadership. Laura Trump sounding off on that turnaround. I think what you saw last night, let me just clarify how big this was. Prior to last night, the largest single event fundraiser in politics ever was the one that Joe Biden had, and he needed three presidents to haul in $26 million. He needed celebrities like Lizzo, Stephen Colbert, Anna Wintour. We needed one man, Donald J. Trump, one president, to double that. It was history made last night. Some of the people who came last night to this event had not contributed at a level like this ever before. Mm. People are not sitting on the sidelines anymore. They understand what's at stake. It's a must win election. And from the election integrity perspective, we're focused on it like a laser at the RNC. Really awesome, by the way, to hear the representatives from the RNC talk about election integrity. When was the last time that happened? You know, Ronna McDaniel, after getting fired from every position, NBC job, MSNBC job, RNC job, like, geez, nobody, like, Donald Trump fired her, but then she was fired like four other times. So that's a, that's a pretty amazing, like, Uno card reverse domino fall of firings. Donald Trump gets to fire you like four times in a row. It's awesome. Ron McDaniel was never talking about election integrity. When was the last time Ron McDaniel told people she cared about election integrity? This is like the number one issue. It goes like election integrity, border, border, election integrity. It's like the number one issue for Republican voters. So it's so refreshing to have an RNC that actually reflects that priority. Michael Watley, who is somebody who oversaw the elections in North Carolina, which is a state that could totally and easily be meddled with, but this is why Donald Trump picked him. Listen, in, in interviews, both on the record and off the record, according to our phone calls and sources within Team Trump, uh, in these interviews, the reason why Michael Watley, who we didn't know very well, uh, admittedly, we didn't know Michael Watley. He was an unknown entity to us, right? We've only met the guy one time um, in passing. So we'd love to have him on the show. But Michael Watley was the guy who kept North Carolina from having shenanigans, right? In 2020, North Carolina had a solid and stable vote. There was no shutting down the vote count at 3 a.m. There were no bags of ballots. 
being drugged here and there. There was there wasn't any of this stuff. There was no deletions of all the data afterwards. North Carolina had a sound electoral system. So this is the guy who ran that just to sort of set the table for Michael Watley talking about what he's going to do to nationalize that election integrity system. And it requires lawyers and observers to be sitting and standing and watching every vote be counted, which everybody should be in favor of. There should never be pipes bursting in the middle of the night and everyone has got to leave. And that's what we're going to, that's the one we're going to start, start shoving the ballots through the machines. That's not how it should ever work. There's so many things that are broken with our electoral system, but this is one of them. And Michael Watley actually sees it and is zeroing in as the RNC chair. Good on him. Have a listen. More about that, Michael. Are you getting out and getting local support to defend the election? You, you've talked about increasing the number of observers, as Lara just walked us through. What can you give us in terms of specifics that you're doing to that end? Sure. Two critical aspects to election integrity. First, we've got to make sure that we have the rules of the road in place in every state to ensure a fair election. So we are working with state legislatures. We're working with boards of elections. We're working with secretaries of state to make sure that we get the rules of the road right. And if they're not, we're going to go file lawsuits. We've already filed over 80 different lawsuits in 24 states to make sure that we have the ground ready to go for uh, safe elections. Secondly, we are recruiting and training tens of thousands of observers, and we're recruiting and training thousands of attorneys to make sure that we are in the room whenever a vote is being cast and a vote is being counted. Good for you. Well, how refreshing. Isn't it nice? I don't go see a lot of, I, I don't go see a lot of doctors. My wife's, my wife's a trauma nurse. She knows the, what there is to be known, right? But like, so, uh, view it as like, view it from like a medical so for like a medical perspective, right? I've had one major surgery in my life. Everyone who plays football obviously shatters their knees. And so I had to, you know, get some get knee surgery, right? Back, back in the day. Um, So if you like that, like a doctor coming in and I'm like, dude, my knees, my knees broke, man. I, can, I, can, I can't walk, right? And there's all these lumps and I, you can push it around. I got to get my knee fixed, right? I say the doctor and the doctor comes in and goes, hmm. It would be very interesting to give you an ear piercing. We could put a fish hook in there with a little doily dangly. And they're like, what the hell's wrong with you? I didn't need an ear piercing. I don't need anything up here. I, it's my knee that's fixed. It's, it's really causing problems. Election integrity is a big deal. This is really a problem. It hurts to not have secure elections. Doctor, please look at where it hurts and fix it. That's all that we've been asking of the RNC. Please, doc. We pay you to look at the things that are hurting us and fix them. Do you want to know why we don't have a 50 seat majority in the House of Representatives right now? Because of Ronna McDaniel, McRomney, because she didn't focus on election integrity, because they didn't take this stuff seriously, and they literally let a day dithered away another election, literally an election that we should have had, that she would have won the Senate and should have won the House and been able to repudiate every bad thing that's happened under Joe Biden. But instead, the doctor, the person that's supposed to fix all this stuff, uh, wasn't being serious and was looking the other way or were looking at the wrong thing. And that's exactly, you see that you can see the expense reports for the RNC and see the uh, private jets, limousines, bar tabs, and what else? Flower arrangements, knickknacks, mementos that they were spending money on. You know what I didn't see in that byline? A lawyer to look at election integrity. Incredible. I'm truly, truly incredible. Laura Trump, uh, obviously sound. You, so what you're seeing here on screen is your your leadership team for the GOP. Laura Trump sounding the alarm. Uh, also with Michael Watley here about securing our elections. And look, we have always seen the support of the RNC, but we've never been one cohesive unit. And the beauty of things is that right now we are. That means we don't need two people to do the same job. As Michael just laid out, every penny of every dollar will go to its highest and best use. We have combed through contracts and vendors. We are making sure we are, are getting the best deal on everything. But when you talk about election integrity, it is vital. It is the number one thing that we are focused on aside from getting out the vote, which, of course, 
Donald Trump himself will do for us. People are excited. And if they could go vote for him today, they would go do it. We are ensuring that this election, we are leaving nothing to chance. I talked about it previously on this show with you before, Maria. We never before at the RNC have had an election integrity division. All of our resources we can put into this division as needed. And with a haul like we got last night, with a march like we had, we have the funding now to ensure we can train poll workers, not just have poll watchers, that we can have lawyers in every voting precinct necessary across this country. Laura Trump talking about the expenses of the RNC. Might as well just pop them up on screen. There you go. Entertainment, food and beverage delivery, alcohol. Let's see how much money they spend on alcohol. Hundreds of $37,000. Okay. For alcohol, $37,000. I mean, who are they, are they partying with Diddy? What's going on here? Spa and cosmetics. Oh, look, uh, almost 10 grand for spas and cosmetics. Donald Trump's got his own spa. Ladies and gentlemen, doesn't need that. Doesn't need, uh, to spend the money on anything other than winning in 2024. And that's what Doug Burgum, who was in the fundraiser, told us afterwards. This is the governor of North Dakota, ran against Donald Trump for president in 2024, uh, now a strong ally of Donald Trump, and many are saying have has a cabinet position waiting. Here we go. Certainly it was the uh, a night of, of unification, a night of support. In some ways, it's the official kickoff of this campaign. Uh, and among the donors, there was people there that have known President Trump for 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, there's people that have come into the fold more recently, but they're all, all united. And of course, uh, uh, Laura Trump and the RNC, Michael Watney there last night, uh, the coordination between the Trump campaign and the RNC, giving people confident confidence that uh, when they're investing, that it's going to help drive towards victory in the fall. And it was in that sense, it was also inspirational because I think that there's a, a real unification of the party around what needs to happen in November. So ladies and gentlemen, we've heard from a number of people who were at this fundraiser that it was just, it was really special because people, everyone got one on one time with Donald Trump. It was a relatively small fundraiser of uh, a gathering of people who could actually like talk and communicate a lot of really great ideas being tossed around and Vivek Ranswamy being there, Kelly Leffler being there, Doug Burgum there, Tim Scott it was there as well. Um, Laura Trump, Don Jr., Kimberly Guilfoyle, Tiffany Trump, Linda McMahon, Wilbur Ross, and New York Jets owner Woody Johnson. Somebody also, of course, who was there is Melania Trump. And here's uh, the side by side of Melania Trump, uh, our first lady versus their first lady. Uh, has there ever been a bigger downgrade? I'm not trying to be like a cat. I'm not trying to be like a cat, like meow. Like, I'm not trying to be like drama, spill the tea kind of guy. But like, have you ever really, have there, has there ever been a bigger downgrade? What the hell is that dress? What is that? Is it Minecraft? Minecraft themed dress for the first lady? What are the, did she borrow Joe Biden's don't slip tennis shoes? Look at the dignity in the class. Can you zoom in? Melania, the dignity, the class of Melania. I miss it. Return, return, return. Show me the one with Jill the Bedazzler. Uh, there you go. <laughs> again, again, we're not being mean. If we're just, we have eyes, they work. It looks like Jill grabbed a shower curtain from a boutique Airbnb in the path of the eclipse, right? In Cincinnati, Ohio. And it was a very art, a very artsy, very bohemian Airbnb. She stole the shower curtain from the Airbnb and she took a pair of uh, scissors and uh, Fisher Price scissors, plastic scissors, and she tried to make a dress out of it. That's what it looks like. Meanwhile, Melania, stunning as ever. Do we have Jill the Bedazzler? And this is what Jill looked like on New Year's Eve. Uh, Jill the Jill Jill's bedazzled dress, which we can best we can the best we can come up with here is that she took a huffy black trash bag, uh, and she gave the black trash bag and then the bag of cocaine that they found in the White House to Hunter Biden, and they gave Hunter Biden a bedazzler. And they let Hunter Biden take the trash bag, plus the bedazzler, plus the bag of cocaine, and they let him go to work, okay? And there's a special thing. Hunter's an artiste. Remember, he's an artiste. People pay a lot of money for his art, right? And um, that's what, and then they said, they told Hunter that Jill will wear this um, on air. Return. Just want, be peaceful on the eyes, please. One more Melania Trump zoom in. There you go. This return. You want this as your first lady? Let me know in the comment section. You want this as your first lady? 
Are you, are you excited for this to be your first lady once more, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. So uh, Tim Scott was at this event. Tim Scott, somebody who many are saying might have a little, a little look from Trump for the vice presidency. Although our next guest is also atop those lists every single time we check. And I got to tell you, we're not here to make any endorsements or to ask any uh, annoying questions that's been asked time and time again, but we are very excited about the prospect of having potentially some more Florida representation on the Trump ticket. We love this state a lot. Somebody who loves this state so much, he ran for Congress and is one of the best members of Congress out there. The great Byron Donalds joins the show now. Congressman, I don't know if you were at this fundraiser, but I assume, I assume that you at the very least are pretty proud of what the president was able to put up points. The president was able to put up this weekend. You know what, Benny? I was not at the fundraiser, and now I'm mad. I mean, geez, $50 million? I want to see a fundraiser like that. that that's tremendous. I mean, honestly, congratulations to the president, uh, to his team. Uh, this is a great campaign team that the president has put together. They're working incredibly hard. And look, I, I think you have a lot of people, a lot of donors who just said, you know what? Enough's enough. Everybody needs to come home. It is time to, to, to unite as a party, circle the wagons around President Trump. And let's go win. I think that fundraiser is indicative of that. Yeah. So obviously don't, we know that you, we didn't want to go here, but we I might as well. Uh, we know that you are a sharply dressed man yourself. Yeah. And we do have these side-by-sides of Melania Trump and Jill Biden. Um, just wanted to get Melania Trump, obviously making a lot of headlines here. W- wanted to get your take on the first couple. She did look radiant. What's Jill Biden wearing? What is that? And I look, I don't, don't comment know. on women's fashion. That's not what I do. But I mean, but come on, you got to do better <laughs> than that. Hey, by the way, Benny, have you yeah. noticed how they've made Kamala Harris like dress worse? <laughs> like, she doesn't dress as good as she probably would in normal life because of Jill Biden. But then Jill Biden did this. I mean, Melania always is ravishing. We all know that. I mean, you know, there's a reason why, you know, like the what is it? The, the fashion mags. You know, they stopped putting her on because she was shaming, the, uh, putting other models to shame. They weren't looking good because Melania is, I mean, look, she's a cut above. Congratulations to President Trump. You married a winner. Uh, that being said, I mean, I don't know what that is from Jill Biden, man. It looks like something like, you know, it like something like the, the, the girls will wear on Halloween or something. I don't know. I don't know what that is. <laughs> we had, uh, we had the, obviously, record-breaking weekend, uh, the, the doubling what Joe Biden and Barack Obama uh, and Bill Clinton and Lizzo all had to get together to combine forces to do in downtown New York, which is the bluest and most Democrat city in America. And Donald Trump just doubled it. What does that say about the political landscape? Hey, wait, time out. Did they raise up the stage for the three of them? Did I just see that right? It's a wheelchair lift because they can't trust Biden to get on and off the stage. So they put him on the that's wheelchair. A, that's, a dang, that's a dang shame. Anyway, <laughs> it's also a shame that Bill Clinton looks younger than him. Wait, is Bill Clinton yeah. younger than Joe Biden? It's a great question. We have producers wow. on. They'll answer. Producers, we need that answer. I, I totally go. messed up the actual question, though. I mean, look, what was a- it embarrassing for them, for the team, for the president's team to only do $26 million, uh, in New York? I mean, look, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a poor kid from the inner city, Benny. I mean, you, you raised $20. I mean, that's something as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, I, you know, give him his flowers for that. But look, at the end of the day, the man's a disaster. So they need all that star star power to put out something like this. And I also think it was really disrespectful that Joe Biden was in New York at the same time they were having the, the wait for uh, for Officer Dillinger, who had lost his life uh, in the line of duty um, and to not even reach out to the to his to the officer's family, um, his wife to do none of that. But you're at Radio City. Uh, raising money. I mean, I just found out to be disrespectful. You know, all this empathy they talk about from the Democrats, we never really see it in real life. We only see it in campaign speeches and on ads, but not in reality. 
Yes. So speaking about reality, it seems like the RNC is now led by people who are grounded in reality. Laura Trump and Michael Watley have been talking a lot about election integrity and talking a lot about how they're going to do their very best with the time that they have to ensure there are lawyers in the room and that there are people there watching the count. And it's really, it uplifts our soul. It uplifts our, our program because it's really nice to have an RNC that reflects the concerns of the American people right now. Um, have you been able to work with that new leadership at the RNC, is there sort of like a sigh of relief uh, with members of Congress and members of the uh, members of the Republican Party that, that there's an actual RNC that's focused on winning and America first? So I actually, I, I know Michael Watley, known him for about a year and a half. I got introduced to him actually by my good friend, Dan Bishop, who's running for the uh, attorney general slot in North Carolina. By the way, North Carolina, elect Dan Bishop to be your attorney general. You'll thank me later. Trust me on this one. Anyway, so, you know, Dan Bishop introduced me to him, got a chance to to, to know Michael, talk to him off and on. And look, I got to tell you, the stuff that the shenanigans they tried to pull uh, in, in North Carolina, the same stuff they did in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania and Arizona, they tried to do it in North Carolina. Mike Watley was the chair. Uh, at the time in North Carolina, and he made sure that didn't go forward. So, you know, I have a lot of trust that this team at the RNC is going to get the job done uh, when it comes to elect election uh, integrity. And a lot of this stuff starts in the courtroom months before the general election. And that's why I think the, the biggest uh, bang for your buck, you know, is going to be is that Mike Watley, Lara Trump, they're going to be right there uh, making sure that these these crazy cases uh, from Mark Elias and the, and the Democrat legal team get stopped dead in their tracks. I mean, he did that in North Carolina. I would anticipate he's going to do that throughout the rest of the country. I want to get your thoughts here on a uh, something that you've actually something that you've actually called Donald Trump before uh, on our on our show, which is uh, mm -hmm. like sort of a Nelson Mandela when talking about how they are wishing to put Donald Trump in jail. Donald Trump saying, "Put me in jail." Over the past week, we have the uh, Truth Socials here from the uh, B Block guys. Uh, Donald Trump saying, put me in jail. Like, I'll be a modern day Nelson Mandela and you'll watch it backfire. So now he's he's eff effectively taunting them and saying, do it. Like, do it. Make me a martyr. Uh, your thoughts on this uh, election strategy? Well, first of all, I don't have a problem with him mocking them because everything that they've done is a mockery for the courtroom. It's a mockery for the court of law. It's a mockery of lady justice. And if we're going to live in this banana republic world where your political rival now gets all these indictments thrown at him, uh, meanwhile, the president's son, they try to drop charges and move charges and hide charges. Um, if that's the world that the Democrats want to operate in, then yeah, I dare them too. Because you can't, you can't shy away from this stuff. You have to stand up to these people. These people are bullies. What they are hoping for is that um, public sentiment goes to their side and then it justifies all their lunatic actions, which frankly destroy the country. So I understand what the president's uh, stance is. If you wanna do it, go ahead. Because every time they've gone to the legal system to get Donald Trump, it's only made him more popular with the American people. Because at the end of the day, Benny, people are saying, well, dang, you guys really suck at this. And if this guy's the person you're so concerned about, then he's got to be good because you're so terrible. And I think that that goes along along the lines of that thought process. And at the end of the day, was Alvin Bragg or Fanny or or you know or I forget the guy's name with the federal cases. Forget his name right now. It doesn't really matter. He's irrelevant. Yeah. Jack Smith. He'll be irrelevant again in about another six months anyway. When you're dealing with people like this. You cannot tuck tail and run. You have to stand up to these people. You have to confront them the same way they choose to confront you. And I think with where the mood of the country is, the mood of the country and the mood of the people are going to be with Donald Trump. Yes. So so m shifting to somebody who obviously really respects Trump's social media posting game and has said so many times, Elon Musk confronting some cases now out of Brazil, which I think is mm. quite fascinating because what you have is you have a government that is targeting an American entrepreneur, targeting uh, somebody who works an enormous amount, has security, top security clearances, works an enormous amount with our military uh, to keep America safe, designs and obviously builds one of the greatest entrepreneurs in, in history, maybe the greatest entrepreneur in history, uh, some somebody who should be protected by our laws and should be protected obviously by uh, our politics because he's provided so much for the country 
and done so much for the country. Yet here we have what's seemingly left leftists and Democrats and the corporate media are cheering for a, a rogue judge in Brazil now going after Elon Musk because he's trying to uphold freedom of speech. Uh, is there any is there any measure in Congress? I've seen a number of your colleagues uh, up on X like talking about this and saying how they support Elon. Um, is there going to be any motion in Congress to to look into this? It seems like the first thing our State Department should be doing is protecting innovators like Elon Musk from this this these type of attacks internationally. You would assume that's what the State Department is supposed to be doing, but they're too busy being a special pleader for Hamas and for the and for the Iranians right now. That's what that's frankly what the State Department's doing, and it's it's disgusting. First, with uh, with what's going on in in Brazil with this judge, you know, I hope Elon, you know, continues to stand up to this fool. Because look, I get it. It's Brazil. It's not the United States. We have the best legal system in the world. One of the reasons why so many people come to to America to do business, and I know that the Biden administration and their crazy tactics are trying to unwind that. But this mess that's happening in Brazil is no different than the mess that's happening in New York City. Let's just be perfectly honest about it. And so, you know, Elon's going to do whatever he's got to do. Our State Department should be there. I believe in the new administration, the State Department will be there. Uh, to 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 do everything that it can uh, to make sure that in Brazil, in our hemisphere, that American entrepreneurs are allowed to, you know, speak freely. Yes. And, and it's not that he was trying to do something to un undermine Brazilians to Brazil's government. It wasn't that. It's they had people on the on on the platform speaking freely. And if yes. people aren't allowed to speak freely, then America does have to has something to say about that, especially when it's in our hemisphere. In our hemisphere, we need to be very serious about these things. The, the radical left, and I mean the ultra radical left, the communists, the fascists uh, that are that are occupying far too many countries in our hemisphere, this is a long-term strategic issue for the United States. And we need to be mindful about this going forward because the Chinese are very mindful about it. It's one of the reasons why you have these, 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 these fascistic communist nations starting to pop up more and more in South America. We gotta put a stop to that using our power, using our, uh, you know, our leverage uh, on these countries, because what we want is a, is a democratic uh, institution in our, in our hemisphere. We don't want it to be top-down authoritarian. We don't want it going after our entrepreneurs, our business owners, or frankly, our people. Because if this judge will do this to Elon Musk, what will he do to any other American who just happens to be on holiday in Brazil? That's exactly right. Microsoft, Apple, Boeing, whoever, whatever, whoever's next, they'll do this to an American. It just seems like such a, it seems like a national security threat. It seems like such an, such a true threat to the country. If a foreign judge can just start coming after our best innovators and an American company, Twitter, like X is an American company and yes, Elon Musk is. is an American and they're specifically targeting him for free speech. It seems so oh, yeah, they, I mean, They're targeting him because, you know, whoever on the platform is calling them out. And he's allowing it to happen. That's the entire purpose of of X, you know. And so I look at the end of the day, you got to stand up to this kind of stuff. Like I said before, these people are bullies. You cannot acquiesce to them. You cannot say, oh, OK, well, because it's how you feel then we're going to go ahead and, and, and follow your crazy logic. You cannot do that. You have to stand for what is right. Elon Musk is standing for what is right. The American government should stand behind it 100 percent. Now, I know they're too busy trying to figure out how to get humanitarian aid uh, into the hands of Hamas. Um, and that's really unfortunate for where our country is right now. But America's principle when it comes to dealing with other nations is we protect Americans everywhere they are, regardless of their stature, regardless of, 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 uh, of, of their business, the nature of their business, as long as it's not something that violates law and, and frankly violates, you know, just, you know, the, the natural order of human beings. But if you're just doing business, our government has responsibility to stand behind you. Yeah. That's what this government needs to be doing immediately. Sounds like a, that's a very America first platform, Congressman. Uh, I know that your name has obviously filtered up to the top of many, many lists, many where, many places. Uh, I just want to get your thoughts. 2024, six months away. I mean, shocking looking at the calendar. Six months away. Seems like we've been gearing up for this for so long. It's been an excruciating three and a half years under Joe Biden. Uh, you're very close with President Trump. Uh, your yeah. thoughts on victory? <sighs> Man, we just got to work hard and people got to get out of vote. It's really that simple. I, I think sometimes people, to put into perspective a presidential election, it's really about really 25 counties kind of determine who's going to be president in the country. You know, red states are red states, blue states are blue states. We kind of know what those are. 
But there is a couple of key areas, you know, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Philadelphia, in, in, in Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania, Atlanta, Phoenix. Um, there are some key areas, some key districts where we got to be successful. And so my hope is, is that voters in those districts, they look at the country and they decide for themselves that, first of all, Donald Trump's a better president than Joe Biden. That's without question. And number two, that you do the right thing for the country and put real leadership back in place. I think if that's if that's really the mindset of voters, we'll be successful. And uh, in six months, we'll be saying, thank God this thing is over, this this crazy experiment with Joe Biden, because it, it really is a disaster. Put your politics aside. Nobody's done well with this man. Nobody has. The only people who've really done well are the people who are subsidized by his crazy policies. So if you get subsidized by the crazy policies, you're making a ton of money. But if you're just out here trying to just, you know, build your business, you're struggling. You're, you're falling behind. You know, if you're dealing with one of these major cities, you have illegal immigrants flooding your flooding your state, you know, flooding your cities. You're falling behind. And so, you know, on a national security perspective, we already talked about it. We've fallen way behind. We need victory. So now the positive side is I think Donald Trump's going to win. Um, you know, I think that as long as Republicans do their job, everything is going to be all right. Yes. All right. Well, that optimism carrying us forward. Thank you, Congressman. See you at the GOP convention in Milwaukee. Everybody follow Byron Donald's 645,000 people. Can't be wrong, baby. Get up in there. Thank you, Congressman. See you, Benny. Thank you. Happy Eclipse Day to Byron. Happy Eclipse Day to all who celebrate. Happy Eclipse Day to the Congressman, Congressman Byron Donalds. Ladies and gentlemen, as you stare up at the sun uh, today, um, do, do, do so carefully and uh, with, with doctor's orders, or whatever. What do I know? You know, I don't know these kind of things. But you're going to see a giant golden ring around the moon. Depending on where you are, you may see the, a full eclipse. It may turn just like dark darkness in the middle of the day. You'll see a sweet golden ring around the sun, and that should remind you that you should invest in gold. Allegiance Gold are my friends where I invest in my precious metals. Have you checked the gold charts? I love, obviously, being right on this program. Uh, we try our best to be humble, but sometimes we got to spike the football. Uh, the price of gold and the gold markets have been popping, all right? So as there is instability and insanity uh, in the marketplace, in the crypto markets, in every market, uh, that's going to lead to people rushing for something that has stable value. That's what every smart nation has done uh, throughout all time. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what you should do with your own savings. Go to protectwithbenny.com today. Call 844-66-BENNY. Right now, get $5,000 in free silver with qualifying purchase. Don't get fooled by inflated stock market values or crypto craziness. Protectwithbenny.com today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we touched on this really quickly with the, uh, with the congressman, but Donald Trump is begging daring the Trump to put him in the, the judge to put Trump in jail. Donald Trump saying he's going to be a modern day Nelson Mandela. Do it. I'll run for president from jail. I'll do it. Make me a martyr. Now, uh, some of the, uh, some of the more interesting commentators have been sounding off on this. One of our favorites is Mark Levin. Uh, Mark Levin is impeccable on these legal issues and he has a, uh, absolute fire take here let's make this our base bomb please this should this shall be our base bomb for the day take it away mark levin uh so he's the lead prosecutor there as a hitman and by the way this judge in the case in the alvin bragg case is a disgrace he is a rogue out of control Democrat hack with a black robe. He's making statements that are outrageous. He has an unconstitutional gag order to protect his daughter and other people, not from violence, but being exposed. Donald Trump has a First Amendment constitutional right to speak as a citizen, and even more so as he's running for president as a former president, and everybody else is speaking against him. Everybody else is making allegations, but this judge whose daughter has raised over $90 million on the case that he is overseeing. Monies that have been raised for Adam Schiff and Chuck Schumer's political action committee. He doesn't see any conflict of interest. He's donated to Democrats in the past. These judges in New York, what a disgrace. you got to be nuts to stay in New York if you can get the hell out of there. 
And so this judge now makes a comment about he's handling a federal insurrection case. This judge is not only a political hack, he's dumb as a doorknob. Hmm. Thank you, Mark Levin, for that, for that extra fire. Have we invited Mark Levin on the show? We should totally invite Mark Levin on the show. I we 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 must. We must do it. We have like various programs, networks that that pitch their personalities all the time. Um, but but let's crack open that can of whoop ass. I really like I really like Mark Levin. Uh, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, I really don't like uh, some of the weepy libs on MSNBC. They are so funny to me. Uh, one of them is called Michael Betschloss. Michael Betschloss is and this is what's important about him. He is this uh, super harebrained historian and apparently he has Joe Biden's ear uh, and is able to like whisper in Joe Biden's ear how to be the next FDA. Like this guy's famous for being like the Biden whisperer. So he goes in and he like fills Joe Biden's, uh, fills Joe Biden's whatever's left of Joe Biden's brainstem with these illusions that he's, that Joe Biden's this historic figure. So some of the more like cringy and embarrassing, um, hyperbolic things you've seen Joe Biden do, a lot of this stuff comes from this guy, Michael Beschloss, and he's invited in the Oval all the time to, to you know, drip, drip honey effectively into the ears of Joe Biden. It's really grotesque. It's really gross. Uh, but this guy was on TV. Anytime he's on TV, he has this he has these meltdowns, right, to, to show you sort of the, the tenor and the timber of this man. He's always having these like these like shaking meltdowns about the 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 ang the the threat of Donald Trump to a democracy. And it's so interesting to watch because it shows you what it looks like when Trump's finally broke you. When Trump finally breaks you, okay? Not Trump looking up at the eclipse. Can we put the photo back up? Trump looking up at the eclipse. This should bring you joy. You should laugh at this. It's empirically funny. It's funny. Carve it into Mount Rushmore. I love it. Get it, get, get the tattoo. Carve it into Mount Rushmore. This is laugh your ass off funny, this this photo. It's it's hilarious. Donald Trump's looking straight into the eclipse, pointing at it. Arr! I'm going to beat you, son. I'm going to beat the sun in a staring contest. It's, incre it's incredible. But if you look at this and you weep and you rend your garments and you cry and you it's drink your soy latte through a rubber straw, all right, and, and you, like, you, you do your best to you know remove your pocket catheter, not non painfully and and weep tears giant crocodile salty tears uh you're a loser if it doesn't bring you happiness and joy like you're a loser you've been broken by donald trump you have full-blown tds and this best loss guy has it okay so here's our salt that live for the day please ladies and gentlemen spare no salt for this man or spare great salt for this man uh salt with great vigor this is uh, our, our salty, salty lib of the day. Yeah, and you know, we all know, all four of us know that term servant leadership. Yep. The president is supposed to be a servant leader, yep. serving us. You hear about Trump saying he's going to be a dictator for a day, which is not going to be for a day if it happens. No. Could be for the rest of our lifetimes and our children's and more. But if that happens, that's totally against American history. The highest rank in the United States is not president. It is citizen, as Harry Truman said. Mm -hmm. And I would just say one thing. Remember, in the United States... We do not work for a president. A president works for us. <laughs> you always got to respect the level of like broke brain screeching and see. So Donald Trump will be the dictator. Donald Trump, not Joe Biden, not the guy who's welcomed illegally 10 million criminal aliens into the country. That's not dictatorial. The guy who's censoring free speech on the Internet. That's not dictatorial. The guy who's starting multiple wars around the world, that's not dictatorial. The guy who's stealing and robbing from all of our hard work through out of control inflation and interest rates, that's not dictatorial. The man who wants to put his political opponents in jail, that's not dictatorial. The man who is working, remember the Pentagon and the State Department went down to oversee the Brazilian elections. What does that mean exactly? Yeah, yeah, what does that mean exactly?
the man who's working with foreign countries to lock up his political adversaries like Elon Musk. That's what they're doing. They're the, the Democrat Party and the totally and completely controlled by Marxist American government are working with foreign nations to lock up people that politically disagree with them, like Elon Musk. To the detriment, by the way, of our military capacities, because Elon Musk runs all the companies that control lower space to make life multiplanetary. Elon Musk works with the American military hand in glove to keep our country safe, and they want to put him in jail because they disagree with him politically. That guy is not the dictator. That guy is not the dictator. The guy who when asked if Donald Trump's going to run again, Joe Biden literally said, we must, uh, what did he say? We must prove that it'll never take office again. It's, it's remar- that guy is not the dictator. Remember, it's Donald Trump because we don't like his posts on X. Donald Trump should post more on X. Ladies and gentlemen, this would be a perfect time for Donald Trump to come back to X. This is also a perfect time in this time of uh, relative uncertainty for you to purchase a firearm and to ensure that you take your own safety and security into your own hands. It is your rights and rights that we don't use, like free speech. Those rights, ladies and gentlemen, well, they go away if you don't use them. This is Monday Gunday, brought to you by Spike Tactical. Intruder dead after Philadelphia woman opens fire. I remember a party that said that they are in favor of women's rights and the security of women. And then those parties create total hellscapes for women to live in, in their cities, an extremely dangerous place where women are preyed upon. Not this woman. Thank God she took her safety and security into her own hands. An alleged intruder is dead and a second one is injured. After a Philadelphia woman discovered them inside of her apartment and opened fire, uh, the woman returned to her apartment in the early morning hours and discovered two alleged intruders. And ladies and gentlemen, pew, pew. She allegedly fought one of them before firing a total of 13 rounds. One intruder, well, after round and find, found out, and the other one went to the hospital. CBS News notes that they there was allegedly a third intruder in the apartment. Uh, and well, uh, uh, three men uh, uh, were trying to impersonate police officers. How terrifying is that, man? Get the hell out of blue cities. They were attempting to impersonate police officers and uh, broke into her apartment. Uh, The person said, I am uh, a nearby female resident, told CBS News that she is terrified living in the area. I'm scared to go to work. I'm scared to go home. You're scared to be in your own house. What a way, what a horrible way to live. What a horrible, awful way to live. Ladies and gentlemen, practice your rights. Be secure in your own home. Uh, Be a peaceful man. Be a dangerous man under control. Be a dangerous person under control. Capable of violence. Capable of defending yourself. And that, quite frankly, is what keeps the tyrants at bay. All of them. Whether Whether it's the thieves who break into your house or whether it's the fascists and Marxists who wish to control every element of your life. Ladies and gentlemen, keep them at bay with Spike's Tactical, the official AR-15 of the Johnson household, and just such a wonderful, wonderful firearm. You see them on the, uh, you see them behind me, ladies and gentlemen, right here. Oh, the microphone blocking the sweet, the mo- blocking the sweet firearm wall. And you see, they, they have like, we have, they, they sent us uh they sent us uh, a version. Oh, there it is. Actually has our actually has uh, my my face on one of the magazines. So really exciting, ladies and gentlemen. Very a very exciting time in the Jonathan household. So we can be on brand when we defend ourselves. Please be on brand by signing up for the Benny Brigade. Go to bennyjohnson.com and sign up and support our work here as independent journalists. We will support you on this great eclipse day. Remember. That you don't have to be a mystic. You can just say, hey, this is God moving the celestial bodies and creating the world and the universe. And that God is who we serve and is who we fear. And we fear him on this program and is why we have a verse of the day. From Joshua 1.9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God 
is with you wherever you go. And he'll be with you today, ladies and gentlemen. It's your boy, Benny. March forward with us to victory. Let's have a great week. See ya.